Hmm, so, a creative project, huh? That seems like something fun to add to this semester. But what should I do? Hello, if you don't recognize me since I haven't used my webcam in forever, here I am. I'm Tyler Messer, and here is my submission for my art history class. So sit back and see what I have to show. So starting off, this is obviously the first option from the list, the video essay. I decided to choose this one since I have a decent experience with video editing. Since starting this class, I kept track of what we covered. We went all over the old world, into the deserts of Egypt, the marble monuments of Greece, the inspired art of Romans, and more of ancient wonders. It's one, one part I noticed we didn't entirely touch on, which I'm technically shredding the rules here because it's technically Europe. It's more like its own identity. Today, we'll be talking about the prehistoric before medieval art in Sweden. I oddly always had a fascination with the Scandinavian culture and the creative styles throughout the ages, with the heavily inscribed metal on their longships to the cultural focus of strength, honor, and battle. Scandinavia in its earliest days originated from Denmark, which soon spread throughout the Scandinavian peninsula and the Baltic Sea. The three main countries that reign under the title of Scandinavian are Denmark, Norway, and Sweden. Other countries, like Finland, Iceland, and the Bjor Islands, alongside the Scandinavian countries, are considered Norse. We'll be looking mostly at Sweden, since it's the country I'm most fascinated with. So now, let's take a look at the first of these ancient art and models. The first piece we shall look at is this amber figure representing a bear, found in Denmark between 7000 and 5000 BC. This bear was found alongside four other figures of bears, a bird, and an elk, all made from the same amber. These were closely associated with what was at the time known as shamanism, which is a belief of magic being powered by nature and planetary energy, usually utilized by figures, totems, or torches. So this may imply that this bear was made to serve to some sort of ritual by the ancient people of the ancient Danish people. The next is a megalithic grave found in Havang in Scania, Sweden, about 3500 to 3200 BC. It is referred to as a dolmen. A dolmen is a single chamber megalithic tomb consisting of two or more vertical megaliths supporting a large flat capstone. I'm still uncertain how they lifted those rocks up there so high. An ancient mystery will never unravel. Couldn't find much other info other than it's a megalith grave, apparently a popular viewing spot open 24-7 in Sweden, so that's nice. Here we have a funnel breaker vessel from Sweden, as well as two corded ware vessels from the same place. The green looking funnel beaker is estimated to have been made around 3500 to 3200 BC, and the corded ware to be about 2600 to 2200 BC. Both of these were used in these times for agriculture, animal husbandry, graves, and history. Yes, history. You know how some of the Greek emperor vases told stories in the art? These funnel beakers, made from usually clay, were carved into the pottery and gave an expression art. The corded ware vessels utilized more tools and methods in introducing art to the pottery and rounded out the top to be less of a funnel. These vases look to have just been decorated with patterns though. This one will be the first possibly from Finland. It is a ceremonial axe head representing an elk, estimated to be about 3000 BC. Not much is known about this other than it may have been used in rituals or other religious purposes. Other than that, I'll comment it looks more like a moose if you give it a few antlers. Here's something that gives me vibes of something that Egyptians would have made for the pharaohs. This is a neck collar made of bronze, sadly not intact. It was found in Schultz, Sweden, and was estimated to be made around 1500 to 1300 BC, possibly used for burial or some ritual. Not much information has been found on this. This neat rune-looking rock is a representation of a horse chariot, around 1200 to 1000 BC. Sadly, it seems like from what I found online that this red paint was added to the granite carvings to make them appear better to the dark background of the rock. Aside from that, you can see the concept of roundedness from the wheels. The split near the middle, linking the carriage to the other part, possibly representing a horse. Here is also some other examples of these granite carvings painted with non-destructive paint for clarity.
Here is a burial mound in Sweden, estimated to be made around 1500 to 1200 BC. These were Paleolithic mounds that covered a sort of burial tomb. Paleolithic tribes at this time, like most civilizations at this time, buried their people in burial buildings, like tombs, and covered it up in the ground to give the dead some peace and a way to mask that eventual stink. Ah, this is a fresh change of scenery. Here is a bracteate made of gold. Bracteates are small amulets made of various materials that were popular around 400 AD to 600 AD. As you can see here, this one is estimated to be made around 450 AD to 550 AD. Inspired by the figure in the middle, assumed to be Alexander the Great. Finally out of the BC era. On the right is a fibula, a type of brooch jewelry that was perhaps worn by nobles and the elite. These were made by many materials as well, and this one seems to be in the shape of a spearhead. The date is estimated to be around the 8th century, possibly discovered in a woman's grave. And that's all I can cover before I end up exceeding past the 10 minutes, so thank you for watching, and I hope this project was entertaining to you all.